The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents Three-Way Love, starring Maureen O'Sullivan and John Lund. William Lundigan is your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. The Family Theater is a program for the family put on by a large group of people here in Hollywood who think a happy family is the greatest thing any one of us could ask for. You folks who have happy families agree with us wholeheartedly, I know. And those of you who don't, well, you're the ones who really know what I mean. Now, the thing is, if you have a happy family, you're lucky. How lucky, you can't imagine. So work. Work hard. Do everything you can to keep it that way. And if you don't have a happy family, well, there is something you can do about it. It takes work. It takes understanding, consideration, kindness, unselfishness. One thing that'll go a long way in that direction is prayer, family prayer. Because it is certainly true that more things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. And it isn't hard to pray. All you do is ask God to help you. Talk to him. He'll answer you. Of that you can be sure. And of this you can be sure. A family that prays together stays together. When Ted Belmont's wife died two years ago, he and his 13-year-old daughter were very lonely. But their need of one another drew them closer together. When it was necessary for Ted to move to another city, it was thought best to leave Edith with her grandmother for the five-month balance of the school year. Meanwhile, Ted has met and married Helen. And now that school is out, we find them waiting at the railroad station for Edith to arrive. Oh, Ted, I'm so excited. I'm a little scared, too. Scared? Yes. What if she doesn't like me? Oh, she's bound to like you, darling. Oh, I think you're prejudiced. I do think you should have told her about me, though. Well, I wanted to surprise the kid. Oh, it may be more of a shock than a surprise. Now, just quit worrying. She'll be tickled to death. Oh, I do hope so. All my life, I've wanted a little girl. I find myself imagining how wonderful it'll be to have her come to me with her confidences. That's what Edith needs, too. She sure missed her mother. Oh, poor darling. Yeah. I felt so sorry for her. I'm afraid I've spoiled her. She needs a little spoiling. Yeah, that's what I figured. Ted, you know I'm going to do my best to be a good mother, don't you? You're tough, Helen. I'm a lucky guy. No, I'm the lucky one. These few months of our marriage have been the happiest time of my life. Mine, too. Mm. Oh, Ted, isn't this exciting? You see her? No. Oh, look, there's a little girl getting off that car. Where? There. Oh, no. No, that's not Edith. Oh. She'll be taller than that. She's at the awkward, gangly age. She is. Holy smoke, here she comes now. But, Ted, that's a young lady. Well, at 15, they're just about as tall as they'll get, Helen. Oh. Well, let's hurry to her. Hey, she's sure grown up, though. I hardly knew her myself. Hi there, Edith. Remember me? Oh, Daddy, I'm so glad to see you. Oh, I've missed you so. I miss you too, baby. Here, let me look at you. Oh, you look marvelous, Dad. You do too. Mm-hmm. Quite the glamour girl. <laughs> Here, let me give you a big hug. Oh. oh, it's sure good to have you, baby. It's good to be here, Dad. Edith, I want you to meet someone very special. This is your new mother. My what? Your new mother. I, uh, I thought I'd surprise you. Dad, you're joking. You, you wouldn't. I'm so happy to meet you, dear. Your father's told me so many wonderful things about you. I'm sure we're going to be great friends. Oh, do you think so? Let's skip the embraces, shall we? I hate people to gush over me. Oh, well, of course. I suppose it is childish. I can't seem to realize you're almost grown up. <laughs> well, uh, how about lunch at Celeste Tea Room? Yes. This is a very special occasion. What's special about it? Why, it's the day when you acquire a new mother. That calls for a celebration. Dad, may I speak to you a minute? Why, of course. Excuse us, Helen. Yes. 
Dad. I didn't want a new mother. I couldn't call anyone else mother. Well, you're going to love Helen, Edith. Come on now, straighten up. Let's hurry home and rest before lunch. I'm not a bit tired. Well, this is your party, baby. Suppose you make a suggestion. Well? Tell me what you'd like most to do. If I may be frank, Dad. Of course, baby. It's almost six months since I've seen you. Couldn't we go someplace and have lunch alone together? Together? Well, I, uh... I'll ask Helen. Uh, oh, Helen. Yes, Dad? Edith suggested that she'd like to, uh... Well, uh, she hasn't seen me in a long time. Oh, and... I understand. You'd like to be together. That's right. <laughs> well, I think that's a wonderful idea. I have some shopping to do in town, and I'll meet you both at dinner tonight, hmm? Helen, dear... I appreciate your understanding. I don't eat too much lunch. I planned a very special dinner. We won't. See you at six. <laughs> Goodbye, Goodbye Lander. you too. Have a good time. Hello? Hello, dear. Oh, my darling, I've been expecting you. Has anything happened? Uh, Helen, please try to understand. What do you mean? Well, uh, Edith has asked me to take her to that Italian restaurant for dinner. To a restaurant? Yes. She says she's been dreaming of Italian food for months. Oh. And, uh, then she wants to go to a show. Oh, but, Ted, I made such a nice dinner. I know, dear, but... On the table looks so pretty. I know, darling, and I appreciate all you've done. Well, couldn't you take her tomorrow? Well, Edith wants to go tonight, and I thought it best to humor her. Well, I... Got to be easy on the kid, you know. Mm. You were right. I should have told her. It was a shock to her. Yes. Well, we'll have to give her time to get used to the idea. Yeah. I guess her nose is a little out of joint. Well, don't worry. She'll come around. Darling, I repeat your tops. Goodbye. Bye, darling. Dad, I've had a wonderful time. Oh, I'm glad you did, baby. That was the best show I've seen in ages. Oh, doesn't Van Johnson send you? Well, uh, hardly. But I did enjoy the show. Hello there. I take it you had a good time. Oh, you still up? Of course. I wouldn't miss showing my new daughter her room. This is her big moment, baby. <laughs> I do hope you like it. I fixed it all up for you. You think you were royalty coming, Edith? Nothing was good enough. She's been running all over town to find just the right wallpaper and drapes to match. Ah, it was fun. She even made the curtains herself because she couldn't find any ready-made ones dainty enough. <laughs> you shouldn't have bothered. I prefer simple, tailored things. Here it is. Isn't it wonderful? Looks like something an interior decorator dreamed up. It's very nice. Do you mind if I strip it of the frills? Well, it's your room, Edith. I, I realize I should have let you express your own personality in decorating it. But, Helen... You're only trying to please oh, her. Edith must feel free to redecorate it if she wants to. But it just... Now, being a man, darling, you wouldn't understand. A girl wants her room to express her own tastes. Uh, I don't know quite why I didn't think of that. Well, uh, I'll leave you girls to get acquainted. See you later. Pretty noble, aren't you? What do you mean? Don't play dumb. You're deliberately trying to turn my father against me. How can you say such a thing? Why should I want to do that? You're jealous, that's why. You know, he loves me more than he does you. He loves us both, dear. Don't dear me. My name is Edith, and I'll thank you to call me that. I'll remember, Edith. If that's the way you want it. That's just the way I want it. Oh, I was so hoping we could be friends. Friends. That's a laugh. Now let's understand each other, Edith. All my life I've wanted a little girl of my own. And when Ted told me he had a daughter, I was very happy about it. Well, I'm not happy about it. I liked having my dad to myself. And you love your father very much, and so do I. That should be a bond between us. No, it isn't. And while I'm in this house, I'll thank you to leave me alone as much as possible. Very well, dear. Edith. Edith. But remember, I still want to be your friend. And if you ever want anything, you feel free to come to me. Don't worry, I won't. Good night, Edith. I'll see you at breakfast. Oh! Of all the goody-goody people, I hate it. I hate him! I hate him! Come in! Oh, hello, Dad. I'm playing some of my new records. 
entrance. You want to dance? Shut that thing off, Edith. It's time I talk to you. Okay, Dad. What do you want to talk about? Edith, don't you think it would be nice if you offered to help Helen with the dishes? Oh. She's been complaining about me, has she? No, no, she hasn't. But it's only right that you should help out. I'm a guest in this house, and guests aren't supposed to work. Oh, where did you get that crazy idea? You're not a guest. You're one of the family. Not one of this family. Look, don't you think it's time to call a truce and begin to act natural? I am acting natural. I'm staying out of your wife's way as much as possible. Is that nice? I didn't choose her. I wasn't even told about her. Don't see why I have to have her companionship pushed down my throat. Nobody's trying to force her companionship on you. Oh, Daddy, it was so wonderful before you were married. Well, it could be wonderful now. We could still have fun together if you didn't stay in your room all the time. Mm, isn't the same with her there. She listens to every word I say. She's jealous. Oh, you've got Helen all wrong. She wouldn't know how to be jealous. That's what you think. It's true. It's the same. I do wish we could be get it together some of the evenings. But that wouldn't be fair to Helen. If she isn't jealous, she wouldn't mind. And you insist she isn't jealous. Of course she isn't. Then how about taking me to a show tonight? Oh, Daddy, just for old time's sake. Well, uh... Let's have just one evening like it used to be, please. Please. Okay, honey. I'll fix it up with you. <laughs> You're an angel. I'll get my coat. <laughs> Here's a picture I've just been dying to see. Oh, uh, Helen's mentioned she'd like to see that, too. Let's see something else and take this in when Helen's with us. But Helen can go during the day sometime. I can't wait to see it, please. All right, baby. Two tickets, please. Oh, Daddy, you're an angel. This is so much fun. Let's make it a weekly event. How about it, Dad? Two evenings out together every week? If it'll make you happy. Oh, Dad. <laughs> Don't you just love roller skating to music, Dad? Yeah, yeah, it is fun. See, you skate as well as ever. Yeah, but uh, let's sit down and rest a minute. I'm tired. Oh, I never get tired of skating. Wouldn't you rather do these things with somebody your own age? Of course not. I just love being with you, Dad. <laughs> I like ice skating better than roller skating, don't you, Dad? Well, maybe I will when I get used to it again. My ankles are a little wobbly. We'll go twice a week until we get to be the best couple on the rink. Yeah, yeah, sure. But for the present, let's skate out here on the edge where I can hold on to the railing. <laughs> oh, Dad, you look so funny wobbling on those skates. Oh, mind your manners, young lady. Don't you dare laugh at your poor old father. <laughs> Love bowling, Dad. Uh huh. What's this? Strike! How's that, Dad? Hey, that's great. Your score makes mine look sick. That's the fun of playing with your father. You can play as well as you're able to. Well, couldn't you have you played with anyone else? No, not with a boy. He'd hate you if you beat him. <laughs> have to use psychology. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to talk to you, Edith. Okay. You've been happier lately, haven't you? You mean since Dad's been allowed to go out with me? I don't say allowed, Edith. I never objected, even from the first day. The one martyr, huh? Edith, now please try to be fair. I get it. You're being noble in the hope of making me ashamed of myself. I wasn't being noble, as you put it. I was trying to be understanding. Just another name for it. Oh, nothing you could say would make me angry today. I'm so happy. And I want you to share my happiness. No, thanks. I won't have any. But you don't understand what I'm trying to tell you. If letting my dad spend some of his evenings with me is sharing your happiness, then okay by me. It's what I want, too. I've been glad you two could have fun together. Glad? Yes. You see, I wouldn't be equal to much physical exertion. How come? Oh, Edith, I want you to be the first to know. We're going to have a baby. A baby? Mm -hmm. Oh, how disgusting. Edith. It wasn't enough that my dad had to share his affections with you, but now there has to be this 
child. Oh, Edith, it'll be your own little brother or sister. Someone for you to love. I won't love it. I'll hate it. Oh, Edith, I thought this could be a secret we two could share together. Something that would bring us closer. Bring us closer? Yes. I never hated you as much as I do right now. Oh. I hate you more and more every day. And I'll hate your little brat, too. Get out! Get out! <laughs> Oh, beautiful morning, isn't it? Huh. Oh, I think I'll leave the car to be greased today. Say, what's the matter with everybody? Am I giving a monologue? You two are certainly sociable. There's nothing to talk about. If you'll excuse me, Dad, I have to get ready for school. Okay, baby. Bye, Daddy. Be seeing you. Goodbye, Edith. Say, what's the matter with you two? What's been the matter ever since Edith came? She won't accept me, and she does everything she can to break up our marriage. Oh, you're imagining oh, things. No. If you'd be a little more understanding oh, of the child... more understanding? After all, she's only a child, and you're a woman. You ought to have more sense. I've swallowed my pride, and I've taken everything from that girl. Helen. I kept telling myself it was unfair of us to surprise her like this. That if I'd just be patient, she'd get over it. Oh, Helen, now... But now I know she'll never get over it. And do you know why? Because she doesn't want to. Helen, listen to me. Oh, I could the... take anything while I thought you were with me. But this does it. I've had all that I'm going to take. Come back here, Helen. I didn't mean to make you mad. Oh, women. Helen, darling. Well, I am surprised to see you. How nice that you've come. Oh, Mother. I'm so glad you're home. So you're glad. Well, now, from the looks of your eyes, I'd say that you're sorry. Mother, I have to talk to you. Well, you come into the living room, darling. All right. Now, you just sit comfortable here on the couch beside me. Tell your old mother all about it. Mother. I remember when you were little, how you'd come to me with your troubles. Mother, I've come back home to stay. I've left Ted. Oh, now, I can't believe that. With my own ears, I heard you take those marriage vows. We were happy together till Edith came. I heard you say, for better or for worse. Oh, but I didn't think anything could be as bad as this. Oh, now listen to her. Is Ted beaten you or come home drunk without his paycheck? Oh, Mother, don't be ridiculous. Ted's always been kind. But that daughter of his, right from the very first. So you see, you see how impossible it is. Listen to me now, child. It's a cross you carry, and a heavy one. Mother. But crosses come our way in life. If we are brave with the help of God, they get lighter in, in a wonderful way. Oh, but this is hopeless. I've told you how patient I've been with the girl. Now, that's where you've been making a mistake. You should be kind but firm. Children are like horses. They like to feel that someone is holding the reins. Oh, I see. And the young one will show you no respect until you demand it as your due. But how can I demand anything when Ted takes sides with her? No. No, I'm through. Are you forgetting that you made a contract before God? Oh, but I... I remember your wedding day. You were so happy. Ted was so proud. Oh, don't. Don't. Do you remember how Ted couldn't take his eyes from your face? And the love light shining like a glow all around. Oh, don't. And I said to myself, Mary, I said, if ever a marriage was made in heaven, it was this marriage. Mother, where did I fail? You forgot that in every true marriage there are three parties. Three? Yes. The man, the woman, and God. Have you asked the third party for help, child? Well, I... How could you expect a happy home if you leave God out? But, Mother, I... It's God who's blessed your marriage with the little one you're expecting. Take your troubles to God. It's wonderful what he can do. Mother. I will. Is that you, Edith? I'm here in the living room. You still here? When I left for school, you were packing. I've come back. 
I've had time to think things over. From now on, things are going to be different. What do you mean? Your father and I have established this home. And if you want to be a part of it, you're going to have to conform. And who's going to make me? I am. Can't you realize it makes your father unhappy when we don't get along? Well, we're never going to get along, and the sooner you find that out, the better. Now, Edith. I want my dad to myself, and I will not share him with anybody. Doesn't he have anything to say about that? I can handle him all right. Just tell him to choose between us and see what happens. There'll be no choosing. From now on, I'm making the rules, and you will not break up this marriage. That's what you've been trying to do, isn't it? Of course. It's taking a little longer than I expected, but I can wait. Well, don't bother to wait any longer. Oh, Ted. Daddy, when, when did you get home? If you're wondering how much I heard, I'll tell you. Just enough to show me what the trouble is. Oh, but Ted, your work, you're never home this time. I've worried all day, Helen, about the way I spoke to you at breakfast. Oh. I picked up the phone a dozen times to tell you so. Oh, Ted. I thought I could be more convincing if I came home to tell you. Darling, will you forgive me? Oh, of course I will, Ted. But, Dad. As for you, Edith, you're right. It wouldn't be possible for us all to get along together. Oh, Dad, I... So, I'm going to send you back to your grandmother. You can live with her. Oh, but, Dad, you don't know what you're doing to me. Grandma's so old-fashioned and strict. Her house is just like a morgue. Seems you're rather hard to please. Oh, I love Grandma, but you know how she is, Dad. I just lived for the time when I could be with you. I'm sorry, Edith, but it's your own fault. I'll phone your grandmother right now. Long distance? Will you please get me Mrs. Ted Morton of 116 Ridgewood Drive, Los Angeles. Daddy, Ted Morton, Daddy, Central 1221. Please give me one more chance. I'm sorry, but I don't think that'd be fair to Helen. She's been put through enough. Oh, Dad, you don't love me. Save the dramatics. Yes, operator. Hello, hello, Mother. Yes, it's Ted. How are you? No, no, there's nothing wrong. Uh, that is, I'm calling to ask if I can send Edith back to live with you. Daddy, please, I'll do anything you say. I see. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yes, we're all fine. I'll write soon. Goodbye, Mother. What'd she say? She said she didn't want the responsibility of a teenage girl. Hmm. Says that now I'm married, you're my wife's job. So now you're stuck with me. Oh, no, no. I think a boarding school will be the answer. That sounds like a wonderful idea. You'll have the companionship of girls your own age. I'm not going to any boarding school. If neither one of you wants me, I'll... I'll run away or commit suicide or... We're not the least bit impressed. <laughs> oh, Ted, now, don't be too hard on her. <laughs> you? Sticking up for her? You can't do an about face like this, Ted. You spent all her life spoiling her and then you... I never thought my own father would turn against me. Oh, no, no. I think if you gave her another chance, things would be different. <laughs> What's going on? Wasn't that Dr. Gibson who just left? Yes. Helen was ill during the night. We had to call him. You don't think it was my fault? You don't blame me, do you, Dad? Well, the strain you put her under didn't help any. But I think she's going to be all right. The doctor says she has to rest for a couple of weeks. Oh. I'm going to phone now and see if I can get a nurse. Don't get a nurse, Dad. I'll take care of Helen. You? What do you know about nursing? I had a home nursing course in high school, and the teacher said I had a natural talent for it. But after the way you've treated Helen... I'm sorry, Dad. I know I've acted like a brat. That is an understatement. You were always spoiled, but you were sweet and kind. You're no more like the girl you were six months ago. What's got into you? Dad, your marriage surprised me so, and I was jealous, I guess. I started to act ugly, and then I just got worse and worse. Didn't know how to get out of it. <laughs> Dad, I, I won't be like that anymore. I've been so miserable. Well, from now on, we make the rules, and you live up to them. I will, Dad. She was swell of Ellen to want me, and I'll make up to her for everything. <laughs> You'll see. Come in. Oh, what a beautiful...
beautiful tray. Roses from our garden. Thank you. My, that soup smells good. Mmm, it is good. I think Dr. Gibson will let me up tomorrow, thanks to your wonderful care. I love taking care of sick people. You do? Do you suppose I could take up nursing when I get through high school? Oh, of course. Your father and I would be so proud. Oh, thanks, Helen. As your very first patient, I shall feel called upon to give you a testimonial. <laughs> let me see now, I'll say, um, oh yes, to whom it may concern. Two weeks ago, I was a sick woman. But thanks to Nurse Edith and her wonderful care, I'm a new person full of vim, vigor, and vitality. Will How's put, that? Will you put it in writing? Every word. Seriously, though, Edith, I do want to thank you. You've been wonderful. I hope I made up to you a little for being such a brat. Oh, I've forgotten all about that. You see, I didn't give myself a chance to find out what a swell person you are. I think you're pretty super yourself. I got a present for you. Shall, hmm? I, shall I take your tray? Please do. Oh, I can't wait to see my present. Here. Oh, how beautiful. I hate to undo it. The package is so pretty. <laughs> oh, darling. Oh, how lovely. I made it myself. Oh, it's the daintiest little baby dress I've ever seen. Do you really like it? Mother. <laughs> You know, if there really were a pot at the foot of the rainbow containing the greatest treasure in the world, do you know what that treasure would be? Happiness. Yes, happiness. The most priceless possession there is. I think if you get right down to it, every one of us agree that happiness is the one thing we really want. Lots of times we get a little sidetracked, thinking that a new job, a new car, more money will bring us happiness. But deep in our hearts, we know it won't. Because real happiness has nothing to do with wealth or material things. Happiness is a quality that comes from love, unselfish love, love of God, love of our husbands and wives, our children, our families. And the road to happiness isn't a rainbow. It's a difficult path, but we have to keep climbing, pulling, working all the time. But one thing that smooths the path is prayer, family prayer. Try it and you'll see. Ask God sincerely and with complete faith in his understanding for his help. God is willing and anxious to help you. All you have to do is ask him. So pray. Pray together as a family, tonight and every night. For a family that prays together, stays together. Before saying good night, I'd like to thank John Lund for his performances, Ted... Maureen O'Sullivan for her portrayal of Helen. A special word of thanks also to Margaret Lowry for writing tonight's play, Max Terre for his music, Mel Williamson, John Ryder, who produced and directed the program. Others who appeared in our play tonight are Arlene Becker and Virginia Gregg. Next week, our family theater stars will be Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard in Goodbye, Goodbye, Goodbye. Your host will be Frank Morgan. This is William Lundigan saying good night, and God bless you. This series of the Family Theater broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program, by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need, and by the actors and technicians in the motion picture and radio industries. This program is heard overseas through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Services. Tony Lofrano speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.